Rafi, thanks. That was really a a great review. And I think, again, you uh, have uh, uh, given a good entree to our next speaker in talking about strategies and appetizers. And I think that uh, one of the real advantages of this format is that we not only can get a perspective from the United States, uh, at the end of the course, we're here, here from Marina Klein about Canada, but now we have an opportunity to hear not only from one of the world's leaders in clinical trials, but also to hear from the European perspective. I think most of you probably know John Michi uh, Michelle Molina, who's the head of infectious disease at the hospital St. Louis in uh, France. He's also the head of the clinical trials group for the French National Agency for Age Research. And again, he's an ideal person to tell us about strategies to optimize PrEP and tell us about some of the other innovative perspectives. So Jean-Michel, we're really pleased to have you as part of this program. Good afternoon. My name is Jean-Michel Molina from the University of Paris, and it's a pleasure to speak at this uh, symposium today. I've been asked to address the issue of strategies to optimize PrEP, schedules, formulation, and innovative approaches. I'll start by summarizing on these slides the uh, attributes of what could be an ideal PrEP regimen. We want a PrEP regimen to have an effectiveness of nearly 100% when taken as recommended. And we want this regimen to work for all populations, MSM, but also heterosexual men and women, IVDUs, adolescents, and pregnant women. We want adherence to be simple with a high forgiveness, and that's why long-acting formulation are so attractive today. We also want a regimen with a clear guidance on how to start and stop PrEP. Ideally also, we would like to have a simple assessment of adherence uh, like we uh, do uh, for a oral TDF with dry blood spots. In case of breakthrough HIV infection, we want to be able to make a rapid and simple diagnosis, and we want to avoid uh, the risk for uh, resistance and in particular, cross-resistance to drug, which could be used for treatment of HIV infection. Regarding safety and tolerability in healthy individuals, ideally, we would like a regimen with a perfect uh, safety and tolerability without any need for uh, monitoring uh, this uh, safety. And eventually, implementation, which is key for uh, perhaps success, we want a regimen that would be easy to use and also potentially to be self-administered at an affordable cost. And this uh, PrEP regimen could be uh, also combined with uh, contraceptives and uh, having multiple options also would be great for uh, individuals. As you may know, the uh, main Achilles heel of uh, oral PrEP today is adherence. And on these slides, I uh, showed you the uh, case control study that was conducted within the DISCOVER trial, comparing FTAP to FTDF among gay men. And what you can see on this slide is a, a clear association between adherence as measured here in the uh, y-axis by the median tenofovir diphosphate concentration in uh, dry blood spots. Uh, among participants who acquired HIV uh, infection during the study and those who remain HIV negative. And you can see that whether uh, individuals use FTAF or FTDF, those who have used less than two doses of pills per week clearly had a much lower uh, denofovid phosphate concentration and were more, slight, more likely to, be, uh, to have been infected with HIV. And uh, there are a, a number of ways to try to overcome uh, this issue of uh, daily adherence to PL. And one of them was uh, the development of an on-demand oral prep regimen. We uh, thought this regimen would be more convenient for some individuals since it would be taken at the time of sexual intercourse. Um, it will give a good guidance on how to start and stop PrEP. Its safety might be improved due to a lower drug exposure, 
and uh, clearly there might be also some cost effectiveness benefit. Uh, intermittent prep uh, was uh, already uh, shown to be effective in the shiv macaque model, where you could see when macaques were challenged rectally every week, but received a double dose of oral TDFFTC two hours uh, before and 24 hours after each rectal challenges, those animals in blue were uh, almost fully protected with an effectiveness in this model of 83%. And based on these data, we designed the Ipergate trial in France and Canada using the 211 regimen, two tablets, two to 24 hours before sex, one tablet after sex, 24 hours later uh, and after the first in drug intake, and a final tablet 48 hours after the first intake. So it takes four pills uh, over three days to cover one sexual intercourse. And the, the results of these double-blind placebo-controlled study are shown here. Um, this uh, trial was conducted uh, in France and Canada and showed uh, an 86% relative reduction in HIV incidence with uh, TDFFTC as compared to placebo in a setting where the HIV incidence overall was quite high. We extended these results where, with the study presented at Croy earlier this year, uh, showing um, in the Paris region the results of an open label prospective cohort of uh, individuals at risk of HIV inquisition who used PrEP. And these individuals were followed uh, from May of 2017 to September of 2020, and they could actually use either daily or on-demand PrEP. More than 3,000 individuals were followed in this cohort, uh, mainly MSM, 98% of individuals were MSM and followed every three months. And we'll, when we looked at the uh, HIV incidence after a median follow-up of 22 months, you could see that the HIV incidence was only 0.11 per 100 person years, with only six cases of HIV infection, three in those using daily uh, TDFFTC, and three in those using on-demand TDFFTC. So these results were, um, in some ways, a confirmation that among MSM, both regimens would work equally well, although this was not a randomized study. And these data were used uh, by WHO to update its guideline and endorsed the 211 regimen for MSM in July of 2019. And more recently, this on demand regimen was also uh, proposed for uh, all men and not only MSM. But there are limitations with this event driven uh, oral prep uh, regimen. Uh, and indeed, we reported in this cohort more frequent regulated gastrointestinal adverse events with on demand as compared to daily prep. We don't have data in women, so this regimen is not recommended for women today. No data with TAF FTC, and we, we wish we could even simplify this 2-1-1 dosing regimen, and that's why we may uh, be able to start uh, early next year an on-demand uh, prep regimen with, uh, with TAF FTC. But still, oral uh, PLs may not be uh, the solution for uh, you know, uh, improving uh, PrEP effectiveness. And I'd like to share with you these data uh, summarizing failure rate of different contraceptive methods across 43 countries. And you could see um, in the uh, uh, y-axis, the cumulative probability of pregnancies per 100 episodes of method use. And uh, as expected, uh, periodic abstinence withdrawal were not that effective. Male condoms and PL were similarly effective with a cumulative probability of around five, but the most effective uh, methods were clearly the injectable in blue and in green, the implants. And this is actually what's driven uh, the field in terms of PrEP regimen. And indeed, um, what we're trying to develop now is long acting PrEP regimen it could be topical agents, oral agents, or parenteral agents, and I'm not going to sp speak of, about cabotography today since uh, uh, Rafi Landovit has uh, presented the data that he generated with, uh, with cabotography. So let's start with uh, the Piverine vaginal ring. The Piverine is an NNATI, and the ring has been uh, recently recommended earlier this year by WHO 
as a new choice for HIV prevention in women. And this recommendation is based on the results of two large phase three placebo controlled study conducted in young women in Saharan Africa, where it was shown that the ring was associated with a 27 to 30% decline in HIV incidence as compared to uh, placebo. And this effectiveness was even better in the open label extension studies. There are a number of uh, uh, ongoing studies in Africa with the ring in adolescent girls and young women, in breastfeeding women, in pregnant women, and also uh, using a ring with an extended duration of three months that could be uh, potentially uh, also combined with contraceptives. So there are a number of exciting studies ongoing with the ring, although there are limitations since its effectiveness is lower than uh, that of systemic PrEP, probably because it's a topical agent with very uh, little uh, uh, penetration in, in blood. Uh, there is the issue of transmitted NNITL resistance in uh, developing countries. And also, uh, we, we don't know enough about the long-term acceptability of this ring today. That's why it's important to uh, investigate new uh, drugs and new uh, uh, prevention methods. Islatravir is one of the most promising agents. Islatravir, uh, formerly known as EFDA, is an adenosine analog. It's a nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor, which has also a um, uh, capacity to inhibit translocation. It has potent in vitro activity against HIV uh, uh, 1 strains and uh, also uh, against uh, an anti R resistant strains. As you can see in the uh, right-hand side, uh, following a single dose administration in patients with HIV infection, there was a nice decline of plasma HIV RNA of more than 1.5 logs. And this uh, antiviral activity has been associated with uh, the islatravir triphosphate concentration. And we have now uh, a target in terms of islatravir triphosphate concentration we need to reach to obtain this uh, antiviral activity. Islatravir also has a long um, half-life in PBMCs, and it has been uh, investigated as a, a prep agent for, uh, in a macaque model, and Marty Markovitz and colleagues uh, have published the uh, effectiveness of uh, weekly Islatravir to protect uh, macaques from a sheave infection following uh, weekly rectal challenges with a low dose of sheave viruses. And as you can see in this model, the use of uh, uh, weekly oral islatravir was associated with an almost full protection of the animals. And that's why uh, this drug is now being tested among uh, humans for uh, PrEP. And uh, this first uh, trial was presented by Sharon Hillier at R4P earlier this year, where uh, people at low risk for HIV acquisition were randomized to receive islatravir as a monthly pill at two different doses or a placebo. And this study was mainly a PK and safety uh, uh, study. And, and as you can see, when you look at uh, the uh, dislatravate triphosphate concentration um, in PBMCs in the y-axis, that whether you use a 60 milligram pill in, in blue or a 100 milligram pill once monthly in uh, orange, uh, what you can see in the left inside panel is following each administration of the monthly peel at week zero, week four, week eight, you achieve a, a in blue, um, dark blue, very high level of islatory triphosphate in PBMC, well above the PK threshold uh, shown with the red dotted line. And that even before the next administration, the uh, PK. Uh, uh, the islatravir triphosphate concentration remain very high. And even at week 24, after the four weeks after the last uh, oral administration, you could see that the uh, high, uh, pretty high concentration uh, were sustained up to week uh, 28. And that's why using uh, this monthly peel of 60 milligram of islatravir, Merck is, uh, has started now a large uh, phase three program uh, with the staff review for PrEP in uh, two trials that have started to enroll participants, one in uh, 
women in sub-Saharan Africa, where the active comparator was FTC TDF, and another one among MSM and transgender women uh, as uh, with uh, uh, FTC TDF and uh, PATH FTC as the comparator. Islatrovir uh, is also being developed as an implant similar to Nexplanum um, with the same applicator. And as you can see here, the uh, Nexplanum implant is a, a four centimeter rod with uh, two, milli two millimeter of uh, width. And uh, you can see the X-ray computer tomography of an implant of Islatrovir on this slide. At uh, Croy this year, Matthew and colleagues presented PK and safety data of the next generation Islatrovir eluting implants. And as you can see in dark green, the uh, concentration of Islatrovir triphosphate in PBMCs uh, following the uh, insertion of the implant at uh, day zero um, was associated with very high uh, concentration, well above again, the PK prep threshold. And then in a model, uh, they were able to show that this uh, 56 milligram implant was projected to lead to concentration above this threshold for at least 52 weeks. And so that's encouraging. The tolerability of the implants was pretty good. And, um, you know, studies um, will start um, soon with the implant. Another drug uh, that has attracted a lot of interest for both the treatment and prevention of HIV infection is lenacapavir. Lenacapavir is a first-in-class long-acting HIV capsid inhibitor that uh, can interfere with uh, the uh, capsid disassembly and therefore the nuclear transport and integration of the uh, HIV DNA. And um, then the capsid could also interfere with a capsid assembly and therefore virus production. It has a high potency in the picomolo range, no cross resistance with uh, already approved drugs, a low in vivo systemic clearance, and a slow release kinetics from the subcutaneous injecting site. And indeed, lenacapavir can be administered both uh, subcutaneously and orally. In the left hand side panel, you could see that following uh, one uh, subcutaneous administration of lenacapavir, you could maintain uh, plasma concentration of lenacapavir in dark blue at the 900 milligram dose, uh, well above the, the, the threshold uh, that was defined as sixfold, the protein adjusted EC95 for at least 24 weeks. However, during the first a uh, couple of weeks, the plasma concentration were not high enough, and that's why the uh, subcutaneous injection is combined with an oral administration of lenacapavir pills. And here, uh, following a single dose administration of lenacapavir at uh, 900 milligrams, you could see a very high uh, and rapid uh, plasma concentration uh, of lenacapavir. So the drug can be given either once weekly, orally, uh, or uh, every six months when uh, administered subcutaneously. Beckerman and colleagues presented at CROI uh, the uh, efficacy of a single injection of a lenacapavir analog uh, to prevent um, sheave infection in macaques. And uh, as you can see on this slide, macaques received uh, at day zero uh, a single uh, uh, subcutaneous injection of this lenacapavir analog or placebo, and then were exposed weekly to rectal challenges of the shield virus. And as you can see at the high dose of lenacapavir, there was a very nice protection of these animals from sheep infection. And so now uh, lenacapavir is being uh, investigated in two large phase three PrEP trials, purpose one and two, uh, to assess its effectiveness to prevent HIV acquisition uh, in purpose one among uh, women in Sub-Saharan Africa, where uh, these women would be randomized to either lenacapavir, FTAF, or FTDF in a double-blind placebo-controlled study, with the primary endpoint being the HIV incidence with lenacapavir as compared to uh, the background HIV incidence. The second study uh, has started also to enroll participants among MSM and transgender women 
with uh, uh, Delhi TDFFTC as a comparator in uh, multiple uh, sites in, uh, in the US and South Africa. Now I'd like to uh, end this talk with uh, a broadly neutralizing antibodies that are also in development for both treatment and prevention of HIV infection. And I will focus on one of these antibodies, VRC01, shown here in, in blue. And VRC01, which is an IgG1, targets the conserved region of the CD4 binding site of the HIV envelope glycoprotein with broad in vitro neutralization capacity against all major HIV1 subtypes. BSC1 has also been shown to prevent sheave infection in animal models. And uh, earlier this year, the results of two uh, antibody mediated prevention studies, the AMP studies, uh, which are phase 2B proof of concept studies, were uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicines. These two studies tested the efficacy of ERC01 to prevent HIV acquisitions. There were two uh, among harmonized protocols, the, uh, the first one among uh, MSM and transgender individuals in the America and Europe, and the second among uh, women in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, both trials had a similar design. They were randomized versus placebo, and uh, the participants received an infusion of brc one monoclonal antibody every two months. Both trials started to uh, uh, enroll participants in 2016. The pull analysis of these two studies is summarized here in nearly uh, 5,000 participants. And overall, it was disappointing to see that there was no significant reduction in HIV incidence with, uh, as you can see, an incidence which was reduced by 8.8% .8 in women and 26.6% among MSM, so non-significant. However, and this is highlighted here in red, if you look at the reduction of incidence in uh, Participants were infected with the, an HIV isolates with an IC90 of less than one microgram per ml. Um, you can see a pretty strong decline in HIV incidence of 75.4%. There was no reduction in HIV incidence when the HIV isolates are an IC80 uh, that was above uh, one microgram per ml. So uh, in summary, these two AMP studies provided the proof of concept that long-term BNAPs can indeed prevent HIV acquisition, providing that these in vitro HIV-1 susceptibility to the antibody uh, was high enough. And clearly in the two AMP study, the HIV-1 susceptibility to VRC01 influenced its preventive effectiveness. Uh, and it's uh, a shame that only 30% of the circulating HIV-1 strains had an IC80 uh, uh, below one microgram per ml. And, and the field now is moving to combine uh, potentially multiple antibodies uh, to uh, have a better uh, HIV prevention. And indeed, when you look at the AVAC website, you can see that the number of studies are ongoing combining two or three uh, or even more uh, monoclonal antibodies or using multi-specific monoclonal antibodies to try to uh, prevent HIV uh, acquisition. So uh, I'd like to summarize now my talk. I think the ideal PrEP agent is not yet available, but clearly there is uh, a lot of excitement about long-acting PrEP agents that could be game changers in the field of HIV prevention. We've heard uh, about cabotegravir. Uh, and islafravir and lenalidopravir are going to be very prom prom uh, promising uh, agents, and we are looking forward to seeing the results of the uh, large phase three trial, which I mentioned today. BNAPs also have the potential of being uh, very potent um, preventive agents. So I think uh, you know we are looking forward uh, to uh, seeing in the near future. Uh, multiple uh, PrEP agents and PrEP uh, methods to be uh, available, and potentially also um, seeing um, PrEP uh, agent combined with contraceptive that could be uh, very attractive for women in Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa. With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Well, thanks so much, Jean-Michel. Jean that was a tour de force. And 
I, I just sit there and listen and go, wow, we have come such a long way. Um, just in terms of going from the concept of, well, can you use a couple of medicines and prevent to now these incredible um, new opportunities. So it's been great to hear your summary and we'll look forward to further discussion as the day goes 